When drilling holes in metal, you could use a handheld rotary tool or a drill press. Drill presses have six core parts, the on and off switch, the table, the motor and spindle pulleys, the chuck, the spindle, and the chuck key. Some presses will have more adjustment knobs, bits, bobs, and pieces, but all will have the core six parts. Drill presses come in all sizes and shapes. They're designed to drill holes and nothing but holes, so they're very good at it. If you need something drilled perfectly perpendicular, use a drill press. Generally, large drill presses are designed to drill large holes and small presses for small holes. It's mainly to do with RPMs, torque, and motor size, basically power. The more material being removed, the more power might be needed. Nicole, I have a rather large floor drill press for woodworking at home. Can I use that or do I need to pick up a smaller press just for jewelry work? Not necessarily. It really depends on how well your drill press chuck is centered. If your spindle and chuck are centered, the drill bit will run nice and evenly with no wobbles. This is called running true. But if the chuck and spindle are not perfectly centered, the drill bit will have a wobble in it and it will never run true. This can be a big problem when using small drill bits. And why is that? A wobbly drill bit will always drill a larger hole than the actual size of the drill bit. And small drill bits are more likely to break if it's wobbling. If you have a drill press already, or if you add one to your studio, be sure to check if it has a wobble. How? Before operating any rotary tool, always remove any loose jewelry or clothing, tie your hair back, and wear protective eyewear. Checking for a wobble is as simple as inserting a small drill bit and observing the rotation. If it wobbles, you've got a wobble. What size? How? I'd use a one millimeter drill bit, and this is how you do it. A drill press chuck can be opened and closed quickly by hand. Close the chuck all the way, then slowly open it until the drill bit will slide in. Tighten the chuck first by hand, then with a key. Turn the drill press on, big wobble. Try again, nice and true. My drill bit is very wobbly, not because my drill press chuck has a wobble in it, but because I did not center the drill bit in the chuck properly. I know this because I know my drill press and it runs true. It's very easy to off-center a drill bit, so keep an eye on that. If you know your press runs true, and you've double-checked to be sure the drill bit is centered in the chuck, but there's still a wobble. You've got a bent drill bit. Don't use it. Throw it away, but not into a garbage bin. Always dispose of sharp safely in a plastic container with a screw-top lid. I use an old ammonia bottle. It's where all of my broken saw blades, used scalpels, bent or broken drill bits end up. And don't forget to label it. Before you drill, you'll need to make a center punch. A center punch is a small divot in the metal which will catch the drill bit, so it doesn't skitter around on the metal, making a mess. You'll need a steel block, a soft hammer, and a center punching tool. Remember, you're not trying to go through the metal with the center punch. That's what drill bits are for. You should not see any big bumps on the back side. You just need to hit hard enough to create a divot which the drill bit can snug into without putting any bumps on the back side. Always drill into a piece of wood. Slowly bring the handle down and line up the drill bit with the center punch. Turn the drill press on and slowly bring the handle down. And there you go. A nice one millimeter hole. Alternatively, you could use a handheld rotary tool to drill your holes with, such as a flexible shaft, which you can purchase at your local jewelry supply store or maybe your local hardware store for around $300 US. But there are also economy versions, which will cost as low as $100. But a Dremel-like handheld rotary tool from your local hardware store could cost as low as $20. Look for sales. I have a Fordham, which is a high-end flexible shaft. At $300, it's a bit pricey, but I've had mine for 25 years, 
and it's still working just as well as when I first purchased it. A flexible shaft will come with a retractable cullet requiring a chuck key and a foot pedal for power control. Use the key to close the cullet all the way. Slowly open the cullet until you can slide the drill bit in. Tighten with the key. Wobble. It's really easy to off-center a drill bit. Wobble. Try again. Running true. Always drill into a bit of scrap wood. A little bit of wax will help with a smoother cut. Do not try to drill with your hand floating above the wood. Brace your hand against the wood. This will help stabilize your hand. Snug the drill bit into the center punch. Start the drill slowly and push down. And there you have it, a nice drilled hole. A handheld Dremel-like rotary tool will come with a selection of cullets and an on and off switch with a few power settings to choose from. Because the cullets are a specific size, regular drill bits will not work. You'll need to get a drill bit with a tapered mandrel. Find the cullet which fits your drill bit and tighten the cullet. Turn your motor on to a medium speed. As with a Fordham, stabilize your hand on the wood. Snug the drill bit into the center punch and push down. And there you have it, a nice hole. Regardless of what tool you use to drill your holes, always read the manufacturer's instructions. They're full of tips and tricks, not to mention safety information. Oh yeah, don't forget to deburr the backside.